morning this Tuesday morning welcome to Kings at Home Daily from me Goff glad you could join us again as we get going again after a four-week break over the summer we're in the book of Hebrews we're in chapter 5 and we're going to pray before we start this morning Lord Jesus thank you for your plans for our lives thank you for the joy of waking up each day with a sense that we belong to you and that we we have the opportunity to walk with you today lord please help us this morning as we spend these few moments speak to us encourage us help us as we set off into a new day in jesus name amen okay we're in chapter five and we've just been learning we've been talking a lot about prayer these last this last little while um that wonderful verse at the end of chapter four of hebrews about approaching the throne of grace with confidence we may receive mercy, find grace to help us in our time of need. Wonderful verse, encouraging us to pray. And then we've had, we, yesterday we saw at the beginning of chapter 5, Jesus, our great high priest, our, our tender-hearted high priest who uh, has made a way for us to come right on in um, to the throne because of what he did on the cross. And we, he threw, at the end of that yesterday, we mentioned this name Melchizedek, this uh, this uh, slightly mysterious figure who appears in Genesis chapter 14 and he uh, 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 Abraham bows down to him tithes to him he's clearly a, a priestly figure a bit of a perhaps a, a picture of Christ in the Old Testament we'll speak more see more of him later on anyway he mentions Melchizedek and then he says this in verse 11 we've much to say about this but it's hard to make it clear to you because you no longer try to understand. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. Oh, wow. So he suddenly realised, oh, I'm probably going too fast here. Um, one of the reasons that this letter is being written is because these these Christians, these believers, they're, they're just not moving on in God. Maybe they're getting drawn back into old ways. They're, they're, they're losing their way. And, and, and so the writer to the Hebrews, he's bringing a little bit of a rebuke here. Um, it's interesting. We, 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 sometimes we talk about how long we've been a Christian, don't we? As if automatically if you've been a christian 10 years rather than one year you're 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 automatically going to be 10 years more mature well hopefully that's true but maturity is not just about time it's about what we do with our lives in that time and unfortunately you can you can meet people who've been uh, they've been christians for many years but there's 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 things missing. There, 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 there isn't a peace and a confidence and a, and a prayerfulness and, and so on that, that, that really ought to characterize their lives, or our lives, after a, that period of time. That's, I'm, just, I'm kind of going off track. Well, no, I'm not going off track. But um, just to say that the Christian life, it's a, it's a journey. We, we, we come to Christ, and yes, the moment we come to Christ, we have access to, to, to the throne of grace. We, we have, it, it, we, we're born again. We're made new. But the journey has just begun. And, and, and we begin to learn uh, to trust and obey. And we, we learn the, the spiritual disciplines of, of prayer and, 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 and coming to the, to the word of life regularly. We, 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 we grow in these things and as a result of these things. And so the writer of the Hebrews is saying, by this time, you ought to be teaching others. You should be teaching others. But you need someone else to teach you. Oh, I don't hope this isn't, it couldn't be said of us. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Quite some interesting things there. Firstly, just to say that um, 
he's not just speaking about head knowledge here. You know, we can fill our, our heads with, 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 with everything that the Bible says. But it needs to be something that is impacting our lives and changing us. He says here, um, train themselves to distinguish good from evil. And that's part of being a more mature Christian. We, 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 we begin to understand, no, that's not going to be helpful for me. I'm not going, to, I'm not going in that direction. I'm not going, to, I'm not going to look at that, get involved in that. I'm going to keep away from that. And, and so it, it's not about head knowledge. It's about discerning. It's about growing. It's about learning how to, how to please the Lord with our lives. And therefore, it goes, it goes on in verse chapter 6. Therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity, not laying again a foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death. Repentance comes right at the beginning of the Christian life, doesn't it? We, we repent of our sins. We, oh God, no, I hate them. I, the, the, you, you paid the price for my sin. Repentance that leads to death. And a faith in God, that's where the Christian life begins. Lord, I put my trust in you. Those are the, these are the foundational things for us as Christian. Instruction about cleansing rites. They, don't forget they're Jews. This probably means baptism for us. Cleansing rites for Jews. Baptism, that's a, funda that's a, that's a fundamental. That's, one of the, uh, that's something we should deal with earlier on in our, in our Christian lives. Okay, if you've not been baptised, there it is. Um, Let's go, more crumbs, where am I? Um, the laying on of hands. Well, well that's, a, that's a beautiful thing, isn't it, there? We know about the laying on of hands and praying for one another and being prayed for. That's part of the, uh, the New Testament Christianity. <laughs> then he goes on. The resurrection of the dead and the eternal judgment. Goodness, these are all basics for these folks. I hope they're, they're basics for us too. I hope you're... Uh, Living in the light of the resurrection, Jesus is alive. We one day are going to be raised to be with him. And eternal judgment, yes, that's real. That's something that we don't often speak about nowadays, do we? The eternal judgment, oh God, that, that should motivate us in our sharing of our faith and, 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 and uh, uh, kind of uh, really provoke us in the way we live, we live our lives. As God permits, we will do so. We'll explain these things. It's impossible for those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who shared the Holy Spirit, shared in the Holy Spirit, who've tasted the goodness of the Word of God and the power of the age to come, who've fallen away to be brought back to repentance. Well, I'm going to say a bit more about that tomorrow because that's a. Uh, it seems to be saying that if a Christian falls away and walks away from the faith, there's no way back. Well, I'm, I'm not going to speak about that this morning. I'll come to that tomorrow. But let me just leave you with this this morning. The writer of the Hebrews is speaking, is wanting his readers to, 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 to grow up, to become mature, to be grasping and living by the, by the word of God, to be those who understand fully what uh, repentance and faith, yes, these are, these are things we, we learned years ago and they're part of our lives. We, we live in the good of those things. And, uh, uh, we, 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 and, and we're also, as he's mentioned earlier on, we're, we're not only aware, we're able to, to teach others. That's what he wants for, for these dear people. He wants them to be good disciples, growing disciples, disciples who are able to help others on their journey too. God help us to be like that in our walk with the Lord, that, that we're not just thinking of ourselves, but we're, we're growing and we're maturing and we're able to help others. We're able to, perhaps within our life group or, or, or whatever, we're able to, um, uh, in our running partners, whatever, we're able to encourage and, and provoke and pray for those around us. Not just thinking of ourselves, but those around us. Therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ. Let's not have to go over those things again. Let's be living in the good of, our, of repentance and faith and walking with the Lord in such a way that we can be helping the, um, others around us, younger in, in the faith, who, um, who we're walking the journey with in church life. And Father, we pray that for ourselves, that uh, Lord, help us to walk well, help us to be those who are uh, progressing in our walk with you day 
by day, living in the light of your word. And Lord, show us how we can be a blessing to those around us. Show us how we can encourage and strengthen those believers around us who are younger in the faith and need our encouragement and friendship and uh, uh, our, our love and, 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 and care. So Lord, please help us to, 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 to play our part in the family of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless. Have a good day. Tomorrow we'll face up to that tricky verse that we didn't quite get into this morning. See you then.